Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part one of lesson 4.5. We're going to start taking a look at graphs of sine and cosine functions. Two objectives for this video. We're going to sketch graphs of basic sine and cosine functions, and then we're going to look at the amplitude and the period to help us sketch the graphs of some other sine and cosine functions. So let's take a look at this equation, y equals the sine of x. If we were to graph this out, there's a few things I want you to notice about the graph. First thing I want you to notice is that the range or the y values of this graph go between negative one and positive one. If we're thinking about that unit circle, those y values on the unit circle go between negative one and positive one. So there's some correlation here. The sine equation also has a period of two pi, which we talked about earlier, meaning that after we reach two pi on our x-axis, our graph is just going to start to repeat itself. And the last thing we should notice is that our graph is symmetric with respect to the origin, meaning if we took this stuff on the right-hand side and rotated it around the origin, it would land on top of the stuff that's over here on the left-hand side of the graph. Now our cosine is going to be very, very similar to our sine, but there are some slight differences. If we're looking at the range, again, the range of our graph is going to go between negative one and positive one because we're still pulling these values from the unit circle, cosine is just the x values from the unit circle, well, those things still go between negative one and positive one. Cosine is also going to have a period of two pi, which means after we hit two pi on our graph, it's just gonna start repeating itself. As far as symmetries go, a cosine graph is going to be symmetric to the y-axis, meaning if we folded this picture along the y-axis, all of our points would match up. Now, as we're looking at graphing these things out, there's gonna be five key points that we're looking for per period on our graph, and those five points are gonna happen at intercepts, both x and y, maximum values, and minimum values. So if we're looking at this picture for y equals the sine of x, one thing I want you to notice about all of these points are the x values. So we got zero, pi over two, pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Those are all of our quadrant angles. Those are going to be the important points that we're working with as we're drawing these graphs out. Similar things are going to be happening as we look at graphing out this cosine equation. We're still going to look for those intercepts, those maximum points and minimum points. And again, all of those x values that we're going to be looking at are these quadrant angles. So we got 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Those are going to be our important points to draw out this picture. So in this first example, here's what we're going to do. We've got the equation y equals 2 sine of x, and we're going to sketch this graph by hand on the interval going from negative pi out to 4 pi. Now we're going to have to use that unit circle to help us out a little bit. So we've got y equals 2 sine of x, we said all of our important points were going to happen at quadrant angles. And I'm just going to start at zero, and then we can adjust from there. So looking at that zero radian angle on our unit circle, the sine at zero is zero. And if we take zero times two, we still get zero. So the first point that I'm going to plot on this graph is going to be zero, zero. Now our next quadrant angle happens at pi over two. If we take the sine of pi over two, that's gonna be one. But then we've got to multiply by this two out in front. So the ordered pair we're gonna be dealing with next is pi over two comma two. Now I'll take a look at my graph here. Each big line counts as pi. So each little line in between there is gonna be a pi over two. So right here at pi over two, we need to go up to two and we should notice that this is going to be a maximum value. From there, our next important quadrant angle is at pi, sine of pi is zero, and zero times this two out in front still gives us zero. So we plot out that point at pi zero. Next important quadrant angle happens at three pi over two, and sine of three pi over two is negative one, and negative one times this two out in front gives us negative two. So if we go to this next small line, we have to go down to negative two, and then I guess our last quadrant angle takes us to two pi. We should recognize that two pi is the same as zero. If we do the sine of two pi, we get zero, and zero times this two is gonna give us zero again. Okay, so this 
piece of our graph that we just drew in, or that I'm completing the line for right now, counts as one full period of this sine graph. We went from 0 to 2 pi. But we want to go all the way down to negative pi and all the way out to 4 pi. Well, remember, this sine graph is periodic. After we make this one full rotation, or after we hit this full 2 pi, our graph is going to start to repeat itself. Now, we should notice that we've got x-intercepts on the end here. After that first x-intercept, we hit a maximum value. Well, if our graph repeats itself, then after this x-intercept, we should hit another maximum value. Then our graph is going to come down, and it has to cross the x-axis again. So we've got another x-intercept at 3 pi. Then, looks like we have to go down to a minimum value, which is at negative 2, before our graph cycles back up and hits that x-axis again. Now if we look at heading in the other direction, here was a maximum working backwards, we hit the x-axis, so we should hit another minimum value before coming back up and hitting that x-axis again. So here's what the entire graph would look like going from negative pi all the way out to 4 pi. Now earlier I said that this sine graph was going to go between negative 1 and positive 1. But when we graphed this one out, it went between negative 2 and positive 2. And that's because we changed something about this equation. We introduced a number out in front of this sine function. Okay, This 2 is what made this graph go higher up to 2 and lower down to negative 2. So here's a couple general equations. This is a general sine equation where it says d plus a sine of bx minus c. And then we've also got a general cosine equation. What we're focusing on right now is that a value out in front of those trig functions. We just looked at what that a value is going to do. Okay, It's either going to make our graph taller, kind of like that last one, or it's going to shrink our graph down. Okay, A is called the amplitude of our graph. If we look at that a value, on the last page we had an a value of 2. If the absolute value of that a value is bigger than 1, okay, which is what we had going on on the last page, it is going to vertically stretch our graph. It's going to make it taller and kind of make it go down further. But if the absolute value of our a number is less than 1, meaning that it would be a fraction like a half or a fourth or a third, it's going to be a vertical shrink. So those maximum and minimum values are going to be closer together. Like I mentioned earlier, we call the absolute value of a the amplitude of our graph. And what that changes is that changes the range. So now our range is going to go from negative a out to positive a. So we've got a couple more equations we're going to graph out. And we're going to use the same coordinate axes to graph each one of these. So we've got 1 half cosine of x and 3 cosine of x. Now when I graph these out, I'm just going to go between 0 and 2 pi so we can get a look at one full cycle of each graph. So I'm going to do this 1 half cosine of x first. Remember, the x values that we're going to plug in are those nice quadrant angles. So I'm going to start with 0. If we plug in 0 for x, cosine of 0 is 1. And if we multiply 1 by this half out in front, we get 1 half. So the first ordered pair we've got is at 0, 1 half. Our next quadrant angle happens at pi over 2. And the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And if we take 0 times a half, we get 0. So at pi over 2, so halfway between 0 and pi, we get 0. Next quadrant angle is at pi, and the cosine of pi is negative 1. And if we take negative 1 times this 1 half, we get negative 1 half. So at pi, down at negative 1 half, which would be about right there. Then our next quadrant angle is at 3 pi over 2. Plugging that in for x, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and a half times 0 is just 0. So we're back at 0 right there. And our last quadrant angle is 2 pi, which again we should recognize as being the same thing as 0. Cosine of 2 pi is 1, and 1 times a half is a half. So we've got 2 pi and a half. So this blue curve that I'm drawing in represents y equals 1 half cosine of x. Now we're going to draw out this other one where we've got 3 cosine of x, and I'm going to plug in those exact same x values. So if we start at 0, 
cosine of 0 is 1, but this time we're multiplying by 3, so we get 0, 3. So we're going to be up here to start. Then if we plug in pi over 2, well, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and 3 times 0 is still 0. For our next quadrant angle, we've got pi, and cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. So we're going to have to go down to negative 3 once we hit pi, so right here. Then our next quadrant angle is at 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and 3 times 0 is still 0. So we're right there at 0 again. And then once we make it back to 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. So at 2 pi, we're back up at 3. So we've got this red curve now that goes between 0 and 2 pi. We can see that on our graph, uh, those x-intercepts for our graph stay the same. The only thing we changed was where the maximum and minimum values were located. We changed the amplitude of our graph. If we're looking at our general equations again, the next thing we're going to focus on is what effect will changing that b value have on our graph. And b is going to be either a horizontal stretch or a shrink, depending on what that b value looks like. So if our b value is some fraction between 0 and 1, it's going to horizontally stretch our graph out left and right. But if that b value is bigger than 1, it's going to be a horizontal shrink, so those endpoints are going to come closer together. And what we're going to be changing for the graph is the period of our graph. So how long it takes for this graph to repeat itself. Originally, the period was 2 pi, but now in order to find the period, we're going to take 2 pi and divide it by b. Now, if that b value is negative, this takes us back to whether these sines or cosines are even or odd. Sine is an odd function, so having a negative x is really the same thing as the negative sine of x. And as far as cosine goes, cosine is even, so making the x negative really doesn't change the graph at all. Cosine of negative x is the same as the cosine of x. So here we go. We're going to graph out the equation y equals the sine of x over 2. Now one thing we should notice about this is our a value out in front of the sine is 1. So if we do the absolute value of our a value, we're just going to get 1. Uh, which tells me the maximum and minimum values are going to happen between negative 1 and positive 1. So I'm actually going to draw in a horizontal line here before we get started to help me out with that. Between 1 and negative 1 because those are going to be our maximum and minimum values. Now focusing on that b value, we've got x over 2 so really our b value is a half and we said in order to find the period for our function that we're looking at we we're going to take 2 pi and divide it by our b value well here we've got to divide it by 2 which we can cancel out by multiplying by 2 so our new period for this picture is going to be 4 pi since we changed the period it's actually going to change where those key points are located on our graph. They used to happen at those quadrant angles 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. That was when we had 2 pi as a period though. Now we have 4 pi. In order to figure out where our key points are going to be located now, we want to take this 4 pi and split it into 4 equal parts. Well if we take 4 pi and divide it by 4, that tells me that we're going to have a key point every pi along the way on our graph. We're still going to start at 0 as far as plotting these points out. So if we plug 0 in, we've got 0 divided by 2. Well, 0 divided by 2 is just 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. So we're still going to start at 0, 0. But now, instead of going to pi over 2, we said the next important point was going to happen every pi along the way. So I'm going to jump over to pi for our next x value. Now notice, if we put pi in here for x, we actually get pi over 2. So the sine of pi over 2, well that's 1. So that should be up here at this maximum value. Going another pi, we went from 0 to pi, we're going to go from pi to 2 pi. Well, plugging 2 pi in for x, 
those twos are going to cancel out, so we'll get just pi, and the sine of pi is zero. So we plugged in two pi, we got zero back as our answer. Next one is going to happen at three pi. Plugging three pi in, we should notice that that's three pi over two, and the sine of three pi over two is negative one. So when we plugged in three pi, we got negative one, and our last important point is going to happen at four pi. 4 pi divided by 2 is 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. So there's our last important point, 4 pi, 0. Now we'll connect all of these dots with a nice smooth curve. And there is our graph for y equals the sine of x over 2. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.